Okay, lots of questions in the group about straps. So I thought I'd try and do a quick video, read different sorts of straps. Um, fabric, faux leather, four fold, tri-fold, double sided. So let's just get my, let's just get my threads sorted. Sorry, I'm not very prepared. Right, so the basic premise of a strap, a fourfold fabric strap, is that you have your fabric panel four times the width of your finished strap. So if you want a one inch strap, your fabric panel will be four inches wide. If you want a one and a half inch strap, six inches wide, so on and so forth. Um, you can do the math, you don't need me to do that. Now, this is just a piece of fabric that I have not interfaced and all I do I just wanted to show you the difference between an interfaced and a non-interfaced one um, is I fold my fabric in half, right, uh, wrong sides together, open it up, having pressed it, so I've got a sort of a, a crease along the centre there, and then I'll take both of those raw edges into the centre, into that fold that I've made, and then fold again so that all of the raw edges are caught within the strap. Now, I would usually put clips along the side, but I'm not going to on this occasion. Um, and I'm not showing you how to do the ends of your strap. That will be another video. Um, I just want to try and show you, and I don't know if it's actually going to work because um, I've only got a short amount of strap, but I didn't really want to waste hundreds of yards of fabric doing this. So, so you're going to basically stitch down both sides. can already see what's happening and I'm hoping that you can see too as I've stitched that this whole panel has started to twist and warp now the fabric itself difficult for you to see has also started to twist and warp now if I were to sew back down the other side from the opposite end it would warp even more if I sew from the same end that I started on, it sometimes will slightly correct the warping, but sometimes not. And that's because I'm using fabric that is not stable. All woven fabric has a propensity to, to warp. Now, it's difficult to see, but you can see that that is still twisting. And over the length of a long strap, it would twist even more. Now you can press some of that out, but even then it still will go back to being warped. Um, so using non-stabilised fabric is never a really good idea for straps. It does make quite a thin, loose sort of feeling strap. It's quite a, a light strap, but it will, it, it, it's insubstantial um, and it will warp. And that's just the nature of the fact that we have woven fabric that has warp threads and weft threads. Um, that does stretch slightly. Um, all cotton fabric has a certain amount of stretch in, to, in it, even if it's on, only on the bias. Um, so a non-interface strap is really not the way forwards. Now this piece I've done exactly the same, but I have interfaced. It feels much more substantial. Um, let's just stitch down one side. And I'm stitch, I will stitch on the side where the opening is first. press that overly well has to be said but I think you can see that that is still perfectly straight it hasn't warped at all and it feels solid um, and it feels like it's substantial and that it will last Think about your handles being the piece of your handbag or your bag that you're making that get the most sort of wear and tear because they're the bits that get picked up all the time. Um, so you want them to be nice and strong. And there again, that's both sides done. And that makes a nice, sturdy, substantial strap. Difficult to compare when you're doing it, but you can see that that's quite floppy. That's the one without the interface and that's 
quite rigid. That's the one with the interfacing. And I'm just using a standard woven fusible interfacing on there. So that's G700 or similar. Um, some people like to use a non-woven. I'm not a fan of a non-woven, but that's just me. Um, if you're gonna use a non-woven, then you need to make sure it's a quite a light one. None of these heavy, thick ones that you get from eBay that cost you a pound a meter, that are like paper card, because they will make a very, very rigid um, strap that doesn't bend and feels papery um, and isn't comfortable in the hand. Um, so, it, you know, it, it's horses for courses, it makes a difference. I don't know if you can even see that, but that one that's not interfaced is already looking slightly bumpy. It's not nice and smooth and flat like the one that was interfaced. And apologies about the fact that the thread doesn't match, but this was literally just kind of, I'm, I'm just doing it for, to show you the difference. It just feels less, less substantial. So that's a fabric, fabric strap always always interface in my opinion now let's look at let's look at a faux leather strap now you have a couple of options we well, have more than a couple of options there are lots of different methods for making faux leather straps but i will start with the basic ones and this is a piece of faux leather that is four inches wide so to make a, a one inch wide strap um let me just grab some because I'm going to need those. In fact, I may need more than that, so let's just get some more straps, more clips. Um, and I've done a line centrally down the middle, so that's two inches from one of either side, or if your strap is wider, obviously the central mark will be in a, in a in sort of, depends well, depends how wide your strap is. If it's six inches wide, um, then you're going to need to make sure that your centre line is three inches from the side. So, you know, do the math. Um, and I've put a strip of double sided tape down either side, just outside of that central mark. Now, if you're going to use double sided tape, please make sure that your double sided tape is the sort that you can sew through. So the quilters tape, not the um, generic double sided that you get from eBay. And there's a reason why I don't like this stuff, because I can never get the ends up. So you're just going to have to watch me struggle to get the top of the double-sided tape off. Uh, if you prefer not to use double-sided tape or it's not your thing, then you can use a little drop of fabric glue instead of the double-sided tape. So I'm just going to take the other side off if I can. However, if you use glue, you will need to make sure that the um, glue is dry before you start stitching. Otherwise, you'll end up with glue on your needle um, and lots of skip stitches. So there we go. I've taken the top off of my double sided tape. And all I'm going to do is fold the side of my faux leather over to that central mark and push it down. Now, I may need a few clips just to hold that in place. taken one side into that central line and I'm now going to take the other side in and butt those raw edges up against each other make sure that they're sitting as close as they can be now if your faux leather is really thick it's worth cutting your strap just a fraction narrower than you need perhaps an eighth of an inch and leaving a tiny, tiny gap between these two raw edges um, just because you're going to fold it in a minute. And if you start folding when you've got really thick faux leather, um, you can see they're butted up against each other. If you start folding when you've got very thick faux leather, um, you find it gets bulky on one side. So if you've got very thick faux leather, like the marine vinyl, um, you may wish to cut your, if, you've got, if you want a, a one inch strap, you might need to cut your uh, width at three and seven eighths, just give a little tiny gap between the two raw edges, which will just allow you to fold easily. So having folded both sides in, I then fold those folds together, both of the sides, so that the raw edges are all caught in the middle. 
So it's exactly the same construction as um, the fabric fourfold strap. You just need something else to kind of hold it in place because of the um, thickness of the faux leather. You need either a bit of glue or a bit of double-sided tape. So once you've got all of the edges together, and you can see that that's the fold along that side, you can then go to your machine and top stitch. And again, faux leather doesn't have a grain, so this is where things can come can get quite complicated because I've seen people say, oh, my faux leather straps have all warped. And that's often because you've cut your um, straps on the diagonal on your faux leather. Faux leather doesn't have a grain as such, but the fabric that's on the back of it sometimes does. So you do have to keep that in mind. I always cut my straps across my faux leather because it's just more economical for me to do that. Now this is fairly thick faux leather um, and my machine can handle it quite well, but some people find that a fourfold faux leather strap is just too much for their machine. And we'll show you a couple of options in a second. So that's my first side stitched. And then I'm gonna do my second side. I'll do it from the other side actually, because I'm gonna do it from the same end. So I'm doing it in the same direction. The faux leather straps are not easy to get a nice neat end on because the faux leather itself is thick. Um, so often you would need strap ends um, on the ends, or people will just leave them raw and um, colour in the end with a Sharpie pen or archival ink so that those raw edges are covered. So that's a, a basic four-fold faux leather strap. It is quite thick, it's quite bulky, and sometimes um, if you've got a thicker faux leather, it's quite difficult to get through your hardware. So you do need to be aware that some faux leathers are not as good for straps as others and some people just, their machines just wouldn't cope with a, a four-fold strap. So that's your basic four-fold faux leather strap. However, if your machine is not quite as, um, as, as happy to go through that amount of layers, you can make a tri-fold strap. Now, the thing with a tri-fold strap is it does have a raw edge showing. However, you can use um, and I'm just going to use this one because this is what I happen to have here. You can use a, uh, a Sharpie along the edge, but what I'll show you is that this is only three inches wide, not four inches. I'm going to make an inch wide strap, but it's going to be made with a piece of faux leather that is three inches wide. I've drawn a line that is one inch from one side, and I've added a line of the double-sided tape on the sort of wider side. So I'm just going to... First of all, I'm going to do my colouring. So I'm doing my colouring along the side where there the, is the one inch side. And basically, I'm just using the edge of a Sharpie pen. If you wanted to use um, leather edge paint, then you could do. Make sure that you follow the manufacturer's instructions. Most of them require a foundation um, layer put on first. It does slow down the whole process because you do have to let that dry. You don't really need to see me colouring the entire thing, but let's carry on just because I'm there and I'm doing it. If your faux leather has a really fluffy backing that you think is going to um, show and make your strap look a bit tacky, you can add some um, fray check along the edge. And actually fray check along the edge after you've done your colouring will seal that colour in. These are permanent markers so they shouldn't leak. Um, but you can see now I've coloured, I don't know if you can actually, but I've coloured in my raw edge so it's no longer a white raw edge or a beige as the back of this is beige. It's now green. It doesn't match because I haven't got a pea green pen but hey ho. Um, so now I'm going to just take off the double sided tape. Well, that one came off a lot easier than I was expecting it to. And on this wider side, I'm going to fold the faux leather wrong sides together into that one inch line that we made. And again, I'm just going to pop a few clips in to make sure that it stays in place. 
Like I say, you don't have to use double-sided tape. You can use ordinary fabric glue, like uh, the Beacon Fabri-Tac, which is what my chosen fabric glue is. Um, and it works really well on faux leather, so. You know, so there we go, that's one side been folded into my one inch line. Then you're gonna take the other side, pull it over, And you can feel where the fold ends so you know that you're bringing your faux leather across now because of the turn of cloth so this piece of faux leather that's on that bend your second side will come just inside of the folded edge let me just i think you can see that quite it's not right to the edge it's just perhaps an eighth of an inch away and that's what we want it to be now I would top stitch this from the side that has the raw edge so that I know that I'm actually catching that raw edge. And I literally will top stitch an eighth of an inch away from that raw edge. So to, to make sure that that's fully secured down. taking off my clips as I go and I've done this where I've colored the edges in a in a contrast color so if I've had a let's say a black strap I've colored the edge in bright orange and then used orange threads for my top stitching which looks really fab um, and it actually makes that raw edge almost a feature on the inside of your strap So that's one side done and then let's go down the other side and what we end up with from the front looks like the same as the four fold strap. On the back, you just have that tiny little ridge where you've got, it's colored, so you can't actually see any of the backing as such. Um, and it makes a thinner strap. Now, the other thing that you can do to kind of reduce the bulk in your strap, if you're worried about this going through um, any kind of uh, hardware, so like a, a, a strap, slider if you're going to make an adjustable strap is you can actually strap uh, stitch down the strap inside of those two lines of outside stitching whether you want to do straight lines or curvy ones or whatever um, if you've got a machine that does sort of embroidery stitches you could do a line of embroidery stitches something pretty down the middle and just the, the stitching itself will help to kind of reduce the thickness let me just do a second line there just to kind of and I'm just doing a wavy line a very random kind of so just adding some sort of wavy lines or say a line of um, embroidery stitching just helps to push those fabrics all together and make a slightly less bulky strap um, but some machines just will not cope with a four-fold strap it's as simple as that um, in which case a tri-fold strap now let me just put those together and see if you can actually actually it's difficult to see um, but one is considerably in fact you can see on that side there you go that's the double that's the uh, four-fold and that one on the top there is the trifold. It's considerably thinner. Um, it doesn't feel any less substantial and it's, it doesn't stretch, which is great. Um, I don't interface any of my faux leather unless it's really thin. Um, and then I would probably wouldn't use it for a strap because the thinner it is, the less durable it tends to be. So there you go. That's a couple of faux leather straps. Now, the other option, if you want to reduce the bulk but you still want to use a bit of faux leather, is to make a double-sided strap. So for a one inch strap, I've cut my faux leather two inches wide 
and I've cut a piece of fabric that is just less than two inches. Now you can do it two inches wide if you want to so that they're the same on both sides but I actually like to do it so that the fabric looks a bit like an accent and again the fabric has been interfaced. I've folded it in half and then folded both sides in to create that um, same look as we had before and I've pressed it on my faux leather. I'm just gonna, here we go again, same problem as I always have. I'm just going to try and remove the double-sided tape and I'm going to fold both of the sides, the raw edges, the long raw edges into the centre, into that centre line I've made and press it down because I've got my double-sided tape so it should hold it. If you don't, if you, if you don't think it's going to hold then pop a couple of clips on. Not all double-sided tapes are as good as others. Um, with straps, it's always worth using the decent stuff that um, you can sew through because you can never be sure that you're not gonna stitch through your um, double-sided tape. And if you stitch through double-sided tape that is not designed to be stitched through, um, you just end up with your needle getting all gummed up with the glue, um, which will cause skip stitches and just be generally horrendous. Um, if you ever do find yourself in that situation and your needle feels all gummed up, a little bit of nail varnish remover on a piece of cotton wool, just wiped up and down the needle, will usually remove it, but it's not ideal. So there we go, that's my one inch strap that's actually got the, both of the raw edges folded in. And here's my piece of fabric that I've cut exactly the same. In fact, I need to just press it because it's not pressed very well. That's why I'm pressing that. My pressing is on. How organised was I? Not very organised. Let me just press that in again because it's come adrift. I obviously didn't have the iron on very warm. So that's one side in. second side in. Again, this has been interfaced. I very rarely use fabric that's not interfaced. It just gives it a bit of body um, and durability and it's a lot more easier to sew. So that's my fabric piece. That's my leather piece or my faux leather piece and I'm going to just lay my fabric piece um, so that the seams that I've, so that the open edges, raw edges, are laid right sides together with the raw edges. So all of those raw edges are then hidden and I clip it in place and I just position it centrally down my strap. Now for me I like to cut my fabric piece just a touch narrower so that what you end up with is something that looks a little bit like it's a fabric accent on your strap. So I think you can probably see there there's a little tiny bit of the faux leather showing on both sides. Just a small amount, it's a fraction of an inch and then I'm going to top stitch down the outside of the fabric piece to join those two pieces together and this will give you a slightly thinner strap than you would have if you were doing all faux leather um, and it's just a pretty a pretty strap um, if you're using perhaps something like tweed that's thick, Harris tweed or something like that for your strap and you find that it's just too bulky to do a four fold strap, then doing one side in fabric and one side in tweed works really well to reduce the bulk. Let's just do the other side. There are a couple of other strap methods that I use as well to make accent straps, but I'll show you those in a different video. Um, because this is what I've got prepped for now. Obviously you would make sure that you had um, threads that either complement um, or match your fabrics rather than 
just blue, which is what was in my machine. So from the faux leather side, what you've got is a, a simple faux leather strap with the top stitching down both sides. From the other side, you've got an accent, a fabric accent, which you can see there's just a little tiny drop of, a little tiny drop, a little tiny bit of faux leather showing on either side. And I think that's really cool. Now you can either have your strap like that, so that it's faux leather on the inside, or like that, so that it's fabric on the inside. But that does reduce the, the thickness of the strap so that you can get it through hardware. So that's a basic. Sound a bit like that lady on the antique roadshow. Basic, better, and best. Um, so that's your basic non interfaced cotton fabric, which I would avoid, really, ladies, if I were you. It does not give a professional finish to your strap. And it's okay for something that's perhaps just a little, a, a kind of a tote bag style thing, I guess. Um, but even then, straps take an awful lot of wear, so interfacing them just gives them that little bit of extra va va boom. There's your basic fourfold that's been interfaced, and it just feels so much more substantial. This is your fourfold faux leather, and you could do this in Harris Tweed or any thicker fabric, any upholstery fabric. Um, but fourfold on anything thicker than ordinary cotton can be a challenge for some more basic machines. Um, I've added the extra stitching down the middle just to try and re reduce the bulk um, because if maybe I want to put this through a tri-glide to make a, an adjustable strap, um, say so adding those extra stitching can help to reduce the bulk in the middle. Then we have the tri-fold which has that raw edge showing. If you paint the raw edge I don't think it's a major issue. It doesn't bother me and I've done lots of bags and sold lots of bags um, like this and the handles hold up really well but it is a lot lot thinner um, and a lot easier to get through hardware. And then we have the double-sided strap. So if you want to make this uh, fabric piece exactly the same size as the faux leather or the uh, thicker fabric, then you can do. I just like to make mine slightly smaller because I quite like that little accent along the side. It almost looks from that side a little bit like you've got a bit of piping along the outside. I just think it's a nice look. If you wanted to make it exactly the same size, then cut your fabric two inches wide and your thicker fabric two inches wide and just join them together so that the sides match perfectly. Um, I find that's quite difficult to get the sides to match perfectly, which is what, probably why I like to have the accent either side. It just gives me a little bit of wiggle room. So there we go. One, two, three, four different strap methods for you um, to be going on with. There are some others and I will come back with, with videos for um, various other different strap methods um, at some point in the future, but that I thought might help you today. <laughs>